Thank you, first off, for coming out. Uh, I know mornings aren't always easy, uh, so thank you for coming out. Uh, if you probably told any of your friends you were coming to listen to a paper guy early in the morning, they thought you were a little crazy. So uh, I appreciate you for that. Um, I want to start off by, not to be redundant, but to say some thank yous too. Uh, Creative Mornings, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, Chris, it's, it's been super easy, first off, which is really nice. It's nice not to have to mess with a lot. Um, Believe it or not, Creative Mornings was the first talk I ever did in my entire career uh, at uh, the Detroit chapter. Uh, I had a four day heads up because it was somebody else was supposed to do it at our company and they left and nobody said anything. So uh, you're gonna hopefully get a little better uh, uh, detail than they did that day. Um, City Beautiful, this is really cool space. This is awesome. Um, Nick and I have traveled, Nick Sombrato from Mama Sauce and I, uh, we go around the country and do some talks. Uh, this is one of the nicest places we, I've ever talked at, so thank you very much. Uh, again, Mac Papers, uh, Courtney, thank you so much for doing the, the sponsorship today. Uh, if you guys have not experienced Mac Papers, you have one of the best paper merchants in the country here in your city, so you be, you're very lucky for that. Uh, definitely take advantage of them because they're, uh, they're a huge deal, so uh, thank you for that. And then uh, Mama Sauce, uh, like I said, Nick, uh, Nick connected with everybody and it's really nice to have people that are, that are looking out for you. So thank you to Mama Sauce for not only the connections, but just for being cool on top of that. Uh, so to, to start it off, I like to preface uh, my talks with, uh, uh, I talk a lot about French paper, uh, but believe it or not, I've been told we're not the only paper mill. Uh, so, uh, everything that I say is going to be detail about French paper, but this stuff does go for the other paper mills. Um, would I be really happy if you guys all left here and called Courtney and ordered a bunch of French paper? Yeah, I definitely would. Um, but I'd also be happy if you called and ordered the right paper. So if it's us or if it's not, believe it or not, this stuff all is for them. Uh, I know I'm a salesman and everything, but th this is the paper industry as a whole, not necessarily just us. Um, so. The question that some of you may uh, be asking, uh, let me get to know you a little better here. Uh, show of hands, who's heard of French paper before today? All right. Uh, who's used French paper before today? All right. Uh, who got drunk here by their friends? Okay. Who's tired of the hand raising thing? Uh, so this is where my story starts. This is my, my parents, uh, Jerry and Terry. Oh, uh, you can't make this stuff up, people. <laughs> uh, so if anybody's ever seen the, the blow up Jerry's, the uh, double jointed Jerry's, all the goofy old promotions we did, that is actually my father. Uh, so I have weird toys of my dad. <laughs> and this is where I started. So. Uh, I was born into a goofy paper family. Uh, I, uh, like Chris said, I am the sixth generation. Um, this is my downtown of my hometown, and I'm not kidding. Uh, so obviously, if you didn't notice, that's our paper mill, and that's the house I grew up in. <laughs> so I quite honestly grew up with a paper mill in my backyard. Hard for that not to kind of change you as a person. Uh, so I truly grew up a paper nerd. Uh, if you're a little boy and you're crazy about weird things, having access to a paper mill is a bad idea. <laughs> so I, I honestly grew up playing in a paper mill, in the warehouse, hanging out with the guys, meeting our customers. Uh, so I, I mean, I grew up loving paper. The smell, the texture, all the colors. Uh, we make over 300 colors in a year, so I get to see all sorts of cool colors, and it's, it's really wild. So um, I, I grew up loving that. But as an adult, I'm kind of traveling the country and I'm meeting paper people and they're the coolest people in the world. Uh, if you're here, you're probably a paper person and if you're not, we're hoping to change that. 
Uh, so I've also learned that I'm a print nerd. Uh, I love print. I print in my basement for fun. I do some screen printing. Uh, the smell, if you don't like the smell of ink, you're, you're weird, not me. Uh, I think they should have car air fresheners with ink smell, if anybody wants to go in on that with me. Um, so uh, uh, printers, they're just, they're cool people. The more you learn about the detail of print, the technical side, it's super, super interesting. So I, I'm also a print nerd. Um, and I've, I've also grown to know that I'm a design nerd. Uh, and this one's a little different because I know quite a bit about paper. I know enough about print to be dangerous. I don't know anything about design. But I get to be around really cool design and I get to enjoy it. And the nice part is I don't know what I'm talking about, so I enjoy it all, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> uh, but I grew up, uh, you know, my sister and I, everybody's seen French paper promotions. It, they all have a ton of handwork. Well, our printers would just print it and send it to us, and my sister would sit in the living room watching movies, putting stuff together, putting stickers on stuff. So I grew up around cool design, cool promotions. Um, so when Chris told me the, uh, the theme of this talk was language, uh, I said, cool, that's easy. My last name's French, done. <laughs> I decided that was probably the easy way out. I took a different approach here. Um, so we're all friends now. Uh, we have a really cool friend named Tom. Tom goes to an Ivy League school. Uh, All-nighters, just crushes everything, graduates at the top of his class, right? The, the Monday after he graduates, he gets out of bed, throws on his sweet French paper sweatsuit that it's on the end of the bed because it's convenient, he wore it the day before, and he heads out to his, uh, his first interview. Ridiculous, right? No Ivy League guy interviews in a sweatsuit. Uh, so we have this other friend named Tom too, totally different Tom. This guy owns a design company. They get the dream client. Uh, Tom and his crew, they work all late nights, early mornings, work through lunch, just do everything they can for this client. They pick the best printer in town. They, they, uh, the guy's got a great reputation. Their salesman uh, comes in and says, hey, you know, what paper are we specking on this? And Tom says, I, I don't know, what, what do you have on the floor? What's convenient? They're, those are equally as ridiculous, but the second thing actually happens. Why, the, you know, Ivy League guys actually wearing those sweatpants, but people every day go in and just say, yeah, well, wh whatever you have, who, eh. If you put that much time into your design, you should think about things. So today I'm gonna talk about what your print and paper say about you and your design. Um, uh, do you do, uh, notice that I kept print and paper in there together. Honestly, print and paper go hand in hand. They're, they're, they should build together, so everything I say about paper goes double for print. Um, oh, what a lot of people don't realize is paper isn't just color. Uh, there are a lot of aspects of your design, your project, that you should probably think about when it comes to the technical side of your paper. Um, hey, I like that brown is probably not a good approach to it. Um, so the things we're going to talk about today are who, where, what, and why. Uh, there are obviously thousands of things to think about, but at some point you got to narrow it down and, and make it a little easier. So start with the who. Uh, when you're looking at papers, who, who are you buying it from? Uh, I, I know a lot of times we, we find something we like and we just let it fly, um, but more and more things are becoming really important. You know, knowing where you're buying these things, uh, who's behind them, who's responsible. So the French paper side of this, uh, like I said, six generations, you kind of get an idea of why it's not the French male modeling agency. Um, I did not say anything about my sister. She's pretty, and this is on video, so. My sister's very pretty. Um, so you, you get an idea, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily just the fact that it's family owned, but we've been around for 144 years doing this. Uh, we haven't sold out. We, we haven't changed our name, we haven't changed our grades, so it's, it's consistent. We've always been there doing the same old thing, uh, we, we just plug along. Uh, believe it or not, my grandpa, who pops up right here, uh, he's 91 years old, he comes to work six days a week. If you ever are in Niles and you need a pot of coffee, he's there at 4.30 waiting for you, and he would love to chat with you if he can hear you. Uh, but then there's also this whole another layer of everybody that actually does everything and keeps the wheels turning, does, does the real work, you know? So 
we have all these awesome Midwest people that are doing this stuff for us and making the paper and, and, and taking care of your project. So it's really cool. Uh, thank you to Sam for these pictures, by the way. Sam, where are you at? There he is. Sam took these for us. Uh, the next one is where. Uh, where is the paper coming from? You would not believe how many people buy Brazilian paper printed with Chinese inks on an Italian press for their Made in America brochure. Um, so, so it, it's, and it's pretty easy to find out where, where these things are sourced, where it's, where it's located. Um, in our case, we are in beautiful Niles, Michigan. Uh, this is where I was born and raised, obviously, but uh, it's one of those things where it's uh, uh, Midwestern values, really cool. If you ever want to know where it is, you do the Michigan hand trick. You guys don't get to do that down here. Um, next is what. Uh, this is probably the most technical of all of them. Not necessarily what is the paper, but what's the paper made of. Uh, so the, f the three ingredients of paper are water, fiber, and dye. Uh, fiber obviously is the one that gets talked about the most. Uh, is it recycled? Is it recyclable? Is it virgin? Is it 100% uh, post-consumer, 50 cent post-consumer? There's a lot of different things that can come into that. And those things will have a, a big difference on your pro end project. Uh, you know, recycled fibers are a little weaker sometimes than virgin fibers and whatever it may be. So uh, you, you want to think about these things depending on if you're going to be doing something with a fold or if it's just going to be a poster or whatever it may be. So that's Tim. Uh, the next thing is dye. Uh, you don't really think about these things, but you can actually call your paper mill and ask, hey, what type of dye is being used in this? Uh, there are standard dyes. There are pigments. There are non-fade dyes. There's all sorts of different options for those too. So this is something to think about. Also, you don't want to get dyes on you, like this poor guy. <laughs> Next is why. Uh, what made you select this paper? Uh, there's two sides of this. There's tangible and intangible. The tangible side is your, uh, your finish, your color, your basis weight, your caliper, things like that. The things that's gonna make somebody hold on to whatever you're producing and not wanna put it down. The other side is intangible things. Um, some paper mills have really cool intangibles. Some don't really talk about them. Uh, what I'm talking about here is, uh, the, the best example is our hydropower. So in 1922, my great, great grandfather built a dam in Niles and put in a hydro plant. So since 1922, we've been producing all our own power, which is pretty cool to be able to say. It's not something that's gonna be for every customer. Some customers won't care if you tell them, hey, this is made with that. But to some, that'll be a really big deal. It's, it's a pretty cool thing. So uh, intangibles are pretty important too. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, weigh all your options. Uh, Courtney can attest to this. There are thousands of paper grades out there, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands, and they're all there for a reason. Uh, these, these paper mills don't make these things just because, like just for fun. So th they're, they're all there. And at the end of the day, you may pick that paper that's there and convenient on the end of the floor, but make sure you do it for the right reason, right? Um, and the last thing, my, my last takeaway for you, uh, I get this from Charles Anderson. Uh, this is his thing that he preaches all the time. Uh, if you're ever familiar with his work, uh, he's, he's done our stuff for uh, 30 years now. And uh, what he, he and his guys do is they start with the paper and they build up. So they let the paper be a design element rather than kind of an afterthought. So uh, Chuck always says the next time you open whatever uh, program you're using, whether it's Illustrator, or Photoshop, whatever it may be, put in a, a paper background. Put your color in in the back and then build from there so that you know exactly what it's going to look like at the end rather than grabbing your swatch books when you're done and ready to go to press. And that is the end. So I wanted to go really short because I really like Q&A. So please help a brother out. <laughs> <laughs> um, just want me to start rolling? Yeah, let's just get started. Yeah, we'll just open up the Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What does an average day in the paper in the mill look like? 
In, in the mill, uh, so uh, it's, it's typically really different. Uh, m most days, if we usually change color every two and a half, three hours. So during the day, you see actually different colors rolling through the machine. Um, so the way paper machines work, you, you don't really like shut it down, change color, and start the next one. So it's just this constant transition. Um, what we do is we actually start the week on white, and then we progress through all our orders until we hit the end of the week on typically black. So we have literally this like rainbow going through the mill every week. Um, so everywhere you walk, there will be rolls of uh, this, the color you just made. And then that stuff ships out and it gets replaced with the new thing. So it's just always different, always changing. Um, it's usually really hot. <laughs> That's another thing. Uh, the, at the beginning of the week, the floors are really clean. At the end, they're very, very dirty. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, literally the mill is just constantly changing. Uh, if you've been there before, I, there's some people here that have been there before. Um, it, you can come in three times and never see the same thing, which is pretty cool. Who is Chuck in the design sphere? And like, what does he mean there? And then what also does he mean to fresh paper? Uh, so uh, I guess I'll go back a little further on that. So uh, Charles Anderson is uh, our designer. He does our, all our design work. And quite honestly, he's the reason why French paper is still around, why the six generations are still rolling. Um, so uh, essentially, what happened was about 30 years ago, uh, Chuck was a young designer. French paper was one of a sea of paper mills. Uh, uh, before Chuck came to French, truly every paper mill, uh, you sent your swatchbook stuff off to the printer. The printer designed it printed it, collated it, and sent it back. So, I mean, if, if you've seen a paper swatch book today, they're really cool and crazy, and that's because of Charles Anderson. Um, literally, I have one on my desk from before him, like as a reminder, and it's a, a white rectangle, and it says whites. They, the printer named the grade, they did everything. I mean, it was, it was really, really boring. Um, and uh, uh, French paper is a very small paper mill. Uh, we are one of the smallest paper mills left in the world. Uh, and the, the reason that we're still around is because uh, Chuck and his designs make us look huge. Um, we are truly the example of why design matters to companies. Um, people that don't believe in design, I, can, I will sit down at a table and tell them, trust me, the only reason I have a job is because of a designer. So, um, so in, the, in the design world, I mean, he truly changed the entire landscape of design in the paper industry. Um, uh, the, the way we do promos, is so drastically different than what it was before. It's, it's pretty wild. Even the, loosely mentioned about like recycled versus virgin, where, where would you source virgin material? Uh, so that's actually a really great question. Uh, we, we as a mill, we don't actually produce virgin fiber, so we can't take a tree and chop it up and bleach and do all that stuff. We're what's called a non-integrated mill. So we, we don't do any of that stuff. It's actually really funny, you know, uh, paper mills, if you've ever met somebody that has been through a town with a paper mill, it's got this like really bad stigma. Like, oh, it's stinky, it's, it's gross. I, I was within 50 miles of that and it smells terrible. Um, we, so we don't have any of that. Uh, I, Niles is 10,000 people. I went to high school with people that didn't know French paper was still operational. Um, it's, it's just, we, we, we're quiet, we don't produce stink, we don't have any of that stuff. So. Um, what we do is we actually, if, we, if we're going to produce a sheet, like really bright whites, bright colors require virgin fiber. Uh, so there's some stuff that we just truly can't make recycled whether we want to or not. Um, and where we source that, we actually buy it from the big guys who do that. So they'll sell us their excess. Um, we, we buy from three locations, uh, southern Canada, northern Michigan, and Alabama actually. And the reason for those three is for the different types of fiber. So we actually buy hardwoods and softwoods, um, and, and the mix is actually what we use to, to put in the paper. So we'll build out a sheet. It'll be 500 pounds of hardwood, 400 of softwood. It's kind of like a, a bacon a cake. Um, you mentioned a couple times like every paper is made for a specific purpose, or there's a reason people are making the papers they're making. Can you just talk about a few that you make and why? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you, uh, every grade we have exists for a reason. Um, we, we don't even pretend to know what you guys want because you're way ahead of the curve uh, compared to us. Um, so as, as a designer, 
Um, what you guys are using truly comes back to us. Uh, uh, we, we use a lot of different ways to decide how we make our grades. Uh, uh, for instance, Poptone. Everybody familiar with Poptone? Has seen it? It's, so Poptone is a, a color line. It's 24 uh, bright poppy colors. Those colors are quite literally the 24 top colors that we made for customers consistently. So custom runs that we have been doing, we do a lot of custom colors. Um, we took all those and said, all right, these guys are making these all the time. There's got to be a reason for that. There's, somebody's buying these down the road, so that's what we need to do. Um, there are also other grades that we have um, that quite literally uh, our competitors were getting rid of, and they had been around for years and years, things that have been around for generations. And we said, you know, those, those grades were there being purchased by someone for 30 years. There's no way that they just went by the wayside this year. So we've actually done things to mimic what somebody had gotten rid of. Not necessarily the same exact sheet, but relative shades and things like that. Um, so, so, I mean, truly, we, we do our paper based on market. So, I mean, like I said, which kind of goes right back. You know, it's, it's there because people asked for it. Uh, it's actually really funny. Uh, you know, the, uh, email is doom and gloom if you're a paper person. Uh, it, it, you can, Courtney can say the same thing. Uh, you know, everywhere you go, boy, I, I mean, you guys are still doing this. I mean, you, I, all I use is my iPad. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it's funny because it actually works in our favor, to, in my opinion. Uh, Everybody looks at a screen. Tr trust me, I'm not any better than anybody else. I have an iPhone, I have the Apple Watch, I have uh, two laptops and a, a PC. I mean, I, I have the full thing too. But I, in my opinion, the more you look at a screen, the more our stuff stands out. Oh, you know, if you, if you hold this in your hand, it, you're going to go, whoa, they, your, your senses are completely thrown off because it's not what you're used to. Um, so I think it really it makes, it makes us even more important versus the, the old way. Um, the, and it's, it's quite, honestly, it's funny, as technology has grown and grown and grown, French paper has gotten better and better and better. So it's, it's, it's I mean, we're, we're very, very strong right now, which is, it's kind of wild. So um, as, I think it'd be a totally different if we were making copy paper, because it's really hard to keep up with that when people aren't printing emails and things like that. But I mean, truly, where, where we sit as a niche, it's, it, I think it's a good thing. I'm not allowed to have a favorite. It's like, uh, I, I equate this to, uh, uh, well, who's your, what's your favorite child? Uh, uh, if I had to pick, if I was a person doing printing, I really love craft speckle tone. I don't know, I just like, I like the, the rugged recycled look. Um, I like our butchers with the cool finish. Um, I, could, I could continue to list things all day probably. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really hard to have a favorite. Um, and truly, I'm, like I'm inundated with it. I see different things all the time. I mean, like I said, we do 300 colors in a year, so there's always something new, always something neat. And every time I think I have a favorite, I'm like, ooh, I really like that one. Uh, so uh, in terms of what's new, so we just released a grade called Craft Home. Uh, it's uh, a bunch of craft looking sheets, uh, 18 new colors. They're awesome, absolutely awesome. Um, this, is no, this goes back to another one of those things. Uh, I know this is on video. I'm just hoping Chuck never sees it. So uh, it, the CSA guys build out our, our color grades. They make it so that it doesn't look like just a bunch of things thrown into a swatch book because they have good color eye. Uh, and we, kind of, we added some things to the swatch just to give it some pop. And it was kind of like, we'll just put them in and like, they can just be there to make it look good. And believe it or not, those are some of the best sellers in the grade. I'm like, man, he, he got a win. Uh, so Craft Tone's new. It's really, really cool, and it's actually taken off like wildfire. It's really, really cool grade. Um, we're working on a couple new things right now. I can't release quite yet. Um, we're, uh, we're doing some new things with our website. Uh, if, if anybody's ever been to our website, hopefully you have, um, take a look at it. We're doing some new things, some, some new content things, but also we're gonna kind of do a little bit of a revamp, so uh, some things on that end too. Yeah. Or does he have like a whole team of designers or an agency he works 
Uh, so, b believe it or not, it's it's Chuck, and he has three or four main people that really do a lot of the design stuff for him, and then he has some, you typically some interns, he'll have three or four interns, um, but they're, they're a very small group, um, and the wild thing about it is they literally do everything for us. Um, top to bottom, they handle it all. Uh, I'm the closest thing to a designer we have at French Paper, and I couldn't draw a stick figure. Um, <laughs> So they, uh, website, promotions, stuff like that. I mean, they, it, you guys, it, a lot of designers get really mad about it because we, it, we're, Chuck likes to say we're the dream client because it's like, here's the next thing you're gonna do. And we're like, yay, and that's, that's the end of it. Uh, uh, it's, you know, the hill, it, quite literally, I'd, I'd have a, a, my briefcase is full of the new things that we're getting ready to do. I mean, it, they send us a PDF and say, make sure we don't have any typos. Um, so they handle it, the, the whole nine yards, they, they steer the ship. Um, what advice would you have for sort of some of the younger creatives that maybe are getting their hands on French paper or gray paper for the first time, and they have a vision for that, but then they're coming up against a client now who they're having to maybe win over in terms of the, the additional costs that maybe they're not used to paying because they've gone with a Vista print or some kind of like, you know, where they just don't get the vision and now they have the challenge to win them over. What, what kind of help them maybe like pitch a little bit? <laughs> Uh, it's it's not easy, and it's something that happens a lot. Uh, there are a lot of people, you know, budget is a, a killer. Um, but what, what we like to talk about with people is, uh, if you spend a little more, you're gonna get a lot more mileage for it. Um, uh, if, if you've ever been somewhere or seen a company where they get a ton of mail, and, and you know, it's like literally a stack of mail, and then there's like that one colored envelope, and it's the first thing you see. And like that, that standout, that, that tangible, like that's the one that you look at, that is such a huge impact. Um, there have been studies, I don't wanna quote it, uh, but there, there have been studies of literally um, uh, in retail settings, people are switching from coded paper to uncoded paper because they'll literally, these scientists watched a bunch of people, which is really weird. Um, and they timed it, and you actually hold on to uncoated paper for longer. There are people that will literally just walk around with it in their hand and not even like realize what they're doing. Like, but but it's uh, it's it it's got this this effect on people. You, the the texture, the the feeling, people really like that. And that that added time that they spend looking at what you're doing is why these things stay around longer. So. Um, if you can sell that to your customer, which is the hard part, it's it, honestly most of the time it takes one time. And if you get over that hump, they realize how much response they get from something, uh, and, and they, you can really take that and steamroll it. And that's that's truly that's the challenge is getting the the, the first time getting them to figure it out. And truly, a lot of times when you see that end piece, it clicks. Even if before the customers see it or or whoever you're sending it to, like, oh, this does look really awesome. You mentioned Chuck taking control of things. Did you guys have to take a leap of faith like you're talking about right now at the company with, with this getting over a hump and making a decision like, like you know, being sold by an agency? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so the, uh, I'll probably mess this up 10 times because it happened before I was born, but uh, so the first time we did a piece with Charles Anderson, uh, he was a young designer at Duffy Design Group. If anybody's ever seen Duffy stuff, it's super cool. Um, and. Uh, he was talking to my dad and the, at, at the time, the president of French paper, Bruce Bigford. And uh, Chuck told him, you know, hey, this is what we should do, it'd be perfect. And they actually produced, the, they created this piece and showed it to him and essentially it was the things they had already done on French paper in a book on, b printed on French paper. So it was French paper inside of French paper, paperception. Uh, and uh, he says, yeah, what's your budget? And my dad told him, uh, and he said, yeah, I mean, I think we could do a decent amount of these and d even direct mail them. And my dad said, no, that's our annual budget. And uh, this is still true today. This happens all the time. Chuck talked him into it. He's very, very good at that. And that's the one thing I will say. Chuck is, if you ever want to talk somebody into paper, Chuck's the guy to call. Um, so uh, he talked him into it. And that piece is in the Smithsonian as a piece that changed graphic design history. So. Uh, it was on Speckletone, which was Chuck's favorite grade. Speckletone was our l worst seller at the time. Uh, everybody here has heard of Speckletone, so it's still around. Uh, so yeah, it was literally our worst seller. Within three months, it was the best seller, and it's never gone down from there. 
and it was like literally we were ready to take a hatchet to it and get rid of Speckletone. So Chuck saved Speckletone, which I just said is one of my favorites. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where my, my dad uh, and Bruce said, you know what, this guy's onto something. He, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. He probably doesn't, but, uh, and uh, they, they went for it. And, and you know, th with him leading us, it, it turned everything around. Um, I mean, literally at that time, paper mills were all the same thing. We, we didn't stand out. Um, and the hard part for us as, as a sales group, especially back then, was you have to be in front of people all the time to remind them, you know, here's French paper. The cool part about it with, with CSA's uh, attachment now is that if I give you guys a really cool poster and it sits in your office or in your cube or next to your desk, you think about French paper all the time. And that's really, you know, that's, that's kind of an added thing that we get with, with the CSA stuff. I, I've met people who have totes on totes of all of our old promos. I've met people that have things we don't even have. Um, I mean, people literally hold on to these things for their whole lives. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's a huge, huge addition. Uh, I, I absolutely love the Midwest. Uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I like, actually, I'm, I'm like in the huge minority. I really like small town life. Uh, I mean, I know everyone everywhere I go. It's really cool. We were, we were talking about it yesterday, actually. I live six miles from the office. It takes me five minutes to get there. I have three blinking lights and a stop sign. <laughs> I mean, that's, you can't beat that. So it's, I, I mean, it's, uh, the, the Midwest is so cool. Uh, the, the personalities, it, it's awesome. Uh, you, you truly can't beat it. And I, I get to go everywhere and I, I, it makes, I really appreciate everywhere. I mean, especially right now, I hate to tell you guys, it's double the temperature here as it is at home. So I'm, I'm really happy about being here. Might extend my stay. Uh, everybody yesterday is like, sorry about the rain. I'm, like, I'm not shoveling, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah. It, uh, I mean, the, the Midwest, you can't beat it. Uh, it's, so, it's so cool to be there. I mean, uh, paper mills, truly, that's where we're, we're all at. We always have the joke, if, you, if we could move that thing, we might go south. But uh, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's perfect. It really is. Uh, it, truly, at the end of the day, the best part about being in the Midwest is the workforce. Um, the, the, the people that keep French paper running are our employees. We have guys out there that are third generation in the mill, if you can believe that. Um, we have guys that have been there uh, since high school that are in their 60s. I mean, people, they stick with us. They, they love doing what they do. Um, if we, and I've had this conversation with guys out there, if we said tomorrow, you know what, we're going to move over, we're going to switch to white paper. We're going to make a bunch of white paper like some of these other guys do. They all say they'd quit. Um, we, we do these really cool custom runs, and it's like, it's like a challenge for our guys. You know, this is a brand new shade, uh, match this PMS color. And they, they t it's like, cool, we get to really try to work, we get to hit that, and, and they get it dead on. And it's, it's, it's a really fun thing, you know, that makes their afternoon. They come in the next day and do something different. So uh, it's pretty neat. Those, and those guys are, I mean, you, you can't find that anywhere but in Niles, Michigan, in my opinion. <laughs> we got time for one more. One more? Question. Who wants to be last? No pressure. Uh, I, I have a least favorite. Okay. <laughs> uh, so my least favorite promo, uh, if you guys have ever seen the, uh, the shades, the glasses, which the, was in the baby picture, uh, when I started at French Paper, I, uh, I went to Michigan State for college. I'm Spartan. And uh, I graduated. I came home, and it was like, all right, Monday, get your butt in the office. Um, so I graduated in early May. And the last week of May was the Howe Conference. If everybody's ever been to the Howe Conference, uh, 3,500, 4,000 designers. It's like this huge deal for us. We get there, and my dad flew me down first so I could set up the booth. And uh, I crack open the boxes, and there is these glasses. And the header card is a cartoon of me like this. <laughs> and I'm like, all, all four of Chuck's designers added me on Facebook like three months before. And I'm like, oh. Why did you not see this coming? <laughs> uh, so I did it to myself. I can't blame anybody but me. But yes, yeah, so and then it's got like this long thing about it, me talking. It's like a speech bubble. 
and, and I'm, not, I'm absolutely kidding. I think it's hilarious, but it's just so weird to be thrust into that. Like, oh, hey, I'm going to hand out my face. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so that's that's really weird for me. People that ask people ask me for autographs, and I'm like, I've I, at that time I'm like, I just started working. <laughs> I've I've done less than zero. Uh, so uh, th uh, that's th that one was wild. I mean, we I feel like every new thing we do is my favorite. That's the hard part. I get I get so pumped about finally getting to the end of that project and seeing it seeing it come out. Uh, the guys do such a good job. Um, and truly, I feel like at, at, as we go through from the, the beginning to the end, I'm like, eh, eh. And then you, you finally see their end concept come to life. And like, oh, that is really cool. Um, I really like, if, any, if you've ever seen the Queen poster we did, it's, a, it's on Plum Punch, a bright purple paper, and it's got a lot of white fill. That's probably my favorite. If I had to pick like one thing gun to my head, like it's, it's awesome. Um, so that would have to be like my, for right now, I'm sure that'll change tomorrow, but um, thank you guys. Seriously, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>